Hello everyone, welcome to FTB episode 8 on Chaos Bill server with Bedmon Incorporated. Um, yeah, this is just a tremendously ghetto skeleton grinder I built, because I can use it to level up my soul shards. Uh, but today we're going to be going back to Project 1 with the Night of the Living Dead house, and first we're going to be covering the exact layout of the top of the first floor of the building, because that isn't actually on records to the best, as far as I can tell. So, uh, let's head over there and I shall show you some reference images. Okay, so here we are on the first floor of the Night of the Living Dead build. And as you can see, firstly it's covered in torches. Uh, again, those are more for just graphing for my purposes than the actual, oh, for actual light. I know this is way too many torches for the amount of light I need. Um, and on the screen now is the one image that I have managed to acquire from the original Night of the Living Dead movie that shows the upstairs. In the second, uh, in, in the remake in 1990, there's a lot more that happens upstairs, and it's a lot, it's covered a lot more in detail. But, uh, original, we hear this, basically this one scene where they hide, where Ben hides the body. Uh, so, we learn a few things from that. The first and most obvious being that this area is pretty much covered up. <coughs> ah, excuse me. Sip of tea. Ah, that's gone cold. Oh well. Uh, but yes, and if we look at this other image that I've managed to crib from the DVD, uh, that pretty much gets borne out. So, we need to, first things first, cover up this overtop section here and lead the fencing around. And for that, we're going to need... Firstly, to sleep so that nothing kills me. And my god, I have a lot of waypoints, don't I? Jeez. I need to either delete some or turn them off or geez, something. Uh, and I brought over my Axe of the Stream, which was a uh, loot treasure, because these trees over here, the acacia trees, still are not qualified in tree for him, tree feller as trees. Uh, but the Axe of the Stream still works on them, so. And look around for creepers. Look, there's one of them now. Eat sand pellet. Good. <sighs> They're coming to get you lying. Anyways. Oh, it doesn't look like it even dropped anything useful. Pity. But uh, meanwhile, I can just whack away at this, and if I have this right, yep. The bottom block is not vanishing, and the axe is doing its work. Oh, and hey, it's Sark. It's been a fairly busy day on the server, actually, but, um... Oh yes, I got some new information regarding the Night of Living Dead house. Uh, apparently, the house that was used was scheduled for demolition, and it was specifically chosen because of that, because it meant that they could do more or less whatever they wanted to it, and no one would care. Uh, but that's also, apparently, why no one has managed to find it since, because it was demolished. So, a few people, I, I haven't even found my, anyone that's managed to find the location where the house used to be, actually, which is quite an achievement, given Pittsburgh. Um, Pittsburgh, of course, being where George Romero does a lot of his movies, if not all of them. Is that too... No, you... Come on. That appears to be just the one. Oh well, we can survive that for a little bit. Uh, so yeah, the house, we do know what happened to it, but we don't really know where it was, which is kind of a shame. Uh, and because it was demolished, it, it's also quite a bit harder for me to get accurate records as to its layout. But going through a ridiculous volume of the uh, of screenshots from the movie, and 
poring over every frame on the DVD that I have has allowed me to get a reasonably appreciable idea of exactly how it looked. Uh, of course, as I said last episode, the, sec the first floor and the attic are completely different locations. In fact, the attic doesn't even appear once in the course of the original movie. But we know it's there because that screenshot from the first floor shows an access hatch into it. Uh, which is handy for our purposes. But... Yep. And also, judging by the arc of the building's uh, roof, we can also tell that there must have been some kind of attic space, even with the height that we're looking at. Detail, everyone! Alright. Well, that's a ton more wood, isn't it? And, in fact, it's all cut down before any more drifts, any more have actually come a crop. Which is good, it means my axe of the stream is doing its job. And are you going to get inside of me? No, you're going to be annoying. So you can stay there and think about what you've done. And I, I'm failing at doors a lot more recently, and the reason for that is these boots. Boots of lying, because I added haste free to them, which is a farmcraft enchantment, and it makes you run ludicrously fast. Uh, it basically acts like a, a constant potion of swiftness as long as you have the armor on. Which, though nice, <laughs> with my frames, means I can to zoom off in various directions. So if I just pull up for my own viewing here the screenshot, so I can work this out a bit more, uh, we can see that we can see from the screenshot that there is a portion that is ahead of it because there's a door and whoa, Enderman, uh, that has a door which is probably one of the rooms. Uh, no, I think he's. Yes, 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 the whale of the the whale of the men of Ender. I know, I know. Uh, but we can see that it does come forward, which means that there is a bit of, We can see that it comes forward, and we know it must come forward because there's a door. Jeez, get your words out, man. Um, so that means we don't just cut this off straight across. We actually need to go back a little bit to accommodate the ground floor and people potentially looking up. So I think that will about do it. And I still have one of these fences. Now, oh, yes. Uh, on the note of frames and my feeling at doors, um, there is a computer I'm looking at now which is substantially better than the one I'm presently using to film and record. Uh, it's, a de it's a desktop. The prices I'm looking at don't include a monitor or a keyboard, which is kind of hilarious. I'm not sure exactly how they intend for you to use a computer in that state, but, um, the base for that computer is £460, and I at present have roughly 200 in my savings, so I could in theory pay it out of my student loan, but I am understandably hesitant to do that, or at least I hope that's understandably hesitant. Uh, so I'd rather not do that if possible, uh, but I figure I can probably bite the bullet if I... Uh, let's see, there's a wall along here, isn't there? Yes, there is. It's the main wall. Bracing wall. Uh, I could probably buy the bullet on that if I wait until about April. And then I can... Oop. I pay for at least 300 of it out of savings. Uh, but that is the end of the month, so... Get up. Thank you. Uh, so you can imagine, we're going to be seeing things like this quite a bit for a while. Uh, that remaining while, at least. Uh, I feel like this needs to go back further. Maybe one block more? One more block should do it. Because this seems a bit sharp, considering that there's a body that gets dragged through here. Uh, yes, I am carrying an axe. My acts of utility. I've been giving them stupid names. I've, I've been giving them not necessarily well, not, not necessarily stupid names, but not necessarily inspiring names either. Because um, if you're in the anvil and the enchanting table, uh, you get a well. I think it's just the anvil. You get a discount on repairing items uh, if you're repairing a named item. So uh, that's good to have. Uh, but yeah, getting back to computers, um, 
if the, the number of frames I get, which according to Fraps at the moment is five or six, bothers you, but you like my content, of course, uh, then there is the donation link at the the uh, sort of midpoint of the uh, description, which you can find below. And I then highly recommend that you click on that and give however much or however little you can. I don't really mind however little it is as long as it doesn't as long as PayPal's rates don't reduce it to zero, because then we all lose that really. And that money is going to go pretty much directly towards um, covering uh, new hardware like that. And if I had to guess, given that there's a door over here that the, uh, the partially devoured body gets taken through, there is probably a cut line along here, uh, which then divides this room and this room. Exactly what these rooms are, I have no idea. We may have to put them to our own uses. But uh, we can just reasonably assume that at least one of them is a bedroom. Uh, but we don't know much because... Um, there isn't actually all that much said about the owners and, and or inhabitants of this house in the original movie. In the remake, it said that it was... Uh, the well, It wasn't the Cooper house or the Cooper farm. It was called... Um, it might have been called Cooper's, I can't recall. But um, it was Uncle Regis' farm, uh, him and Cousin Satchel, which is a lovely name to give someone. But um, yeah, it was Uncle Regis and Uncle Satchel, and uh, Cousin Satchel, and they are... It's like, they, 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 there's like a full like backstory given as to what happened to them. Especially since uh, Satchel is the guy that you find decayed on the first floor. Or devoured, I should say. And Reach is, in fact, one of the earliest zombies that Barbara fights. Uh, but you don't get any of that inside of um, the original Night of the Living Dead, partially because uh, Barbara is effectively a vegetable for most of it. Hey. Information, information. We want information. I'm just going to check this again. Again, it looks like there is another door just after here when Ben gets up the stairs. So if we add one here, and where is, how is this going to fit into that one? Could that be another tie point here? Bear in mind, I'm not a joiner or an architect or any of these things. So if uh, I use a term, don't take it as writ that that's what the term is actually what the actual term is for what I'm doing. Uh, but that leaves us with the question of what the rest of this place is used for. And the fact is, we just don't know. Some of these rooms may be joined together, others may be large rooms for various purposes, like a study. And oh, I believe, yep, the sun is going down, as we can just see through that uh, door and incomplete wall. Uh, oh yes, I got... The, actually, that's falling in, quite, in place quite nicely. Uh, this is the two windows that we see from when Barbara is approaching the house with that very, very brief shot. Uh, and I just, I, modif I modified a little bit how this side of the room, how the side of the building was set, laid out uh, from the last episode that we did on the build. And it looked like the windows, some of the windows were taller and they were differently spaced and I had to extend out the uh, piece here, the little, uh, what is the word for that? Canopy is what I'm going to say. I cannot fully remember what the precise term is. Uh, but that looks like it falls in rather neat place with our, where this uh, room comes in. That's good. Uh, we have no real shots of other sides of the house. We have a little bit of detail from this one, I think. Possibly it's that one. From when Barbara is running around the house trying to find an, ex trying to, uh, trying to find an entryway. And seeing uh, if there's anyone around that can help her save Johnny. Of course, Johnny is always, is always gone, as far as the stories go. And let's fill in this wall. Uh, so yeah, once we've got the main structure laid out, we'll work on getting more function. We've still got the basement to dig out, uh, which is a fairly important location, because it's where... It's always where Ben ends up, and it's always where Cooper starts out. The Coopers, I should say. 
Uh, plus, I know that there is like another, I know that there's like a uh, kind of teen character, but I cannot for the life of me remember his name. I never can. But uh, he becomes the most hillbillied hick in the remake. It's like, um, I think his girlfriend is called Judy in the original. I think, I can't quite recall off the top of my head. But uh, in the remake, for whatever reason, Savini rewrote it so that her name was in fact Judy Rose. <laughs> Very strange. Uh, and he's also, that, that kid is also like your only explanation of where you are as far as the house goes at that point. And yeah, that works nicely. And, no. Um, but yeah, that was, uh, that's an interesting little tidbit of between the, the worlds. <clears throat> uh, so, we've got more or less everything laid out that we can see from the images. I'll just have one last look. You know, we can't really see if there's any other doors, so we can only presume this much from what we can actually see of the uh, first floor in the original movie. It's a lot easier to build this thing out of the 1990 remake version, but we don't have the luxury of that with this particular build. We might with a later one, we'll see. Okay, and that, roughly from about here, describes what we can see from the screenshot. Uh, actually, I just shuffle a little bit further along here. Yeah, that, that roughly describes what we see in the screenshot. Obviously, it's not coloured and decorated and such, but that roughly describes it. Which then leaves us with the question of how to fill out the rest of the upstairs. Uh, because we can clearly... Uh, Cut in some, cut in some other doors, and it's pretty clear that this is a central staircase that goes to a number of different areas, quite probably. But we just don't know how they're laid out. So I'm going to go with a sort of spiral uh, of rooms. So we just have uh, oh, different cutoffs. So this one comes out this way. Grab some more wood. This one cuts out this way, and that then gives us some reasonable scale kind of rooms that we can use for bedrooms and studies and storage and all sorts. Uh, but one thing we do also need to remember is that that attic. We similarly have no idea what that attic is used for, but we know that there is an access point to it. Around about here, I think? Now, of course, it's difficult for us to get up there, we can only presume that there's ladders available around. And we might move over a block so we can actually get in there. But uh, we know that there is something up there, and we know that the uh, incline of the sea of the actual, like, house roof would lead us to believe that there is something up there. Exactly what that is, I don't know. I guess we'll have to find out. So, we'll... We'll put some ladders up there later, and I shall, f as I finish off the ceiling and the roof and whatnot, most of the roof. And ooh, look, there's the moon passing overhead. And by the sounds of it, and no, oh, <laughs> this is the problem with not having the walls finished. <laughs> the uh, the exterior walls. I thought you were on the roof, man. Jeez. Hi, 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 hi. Right. Well. Uh, next episode we're going to start trying... Well, we, next episode we're probably going to finish off building our sort of utility minecart car with Steve's carts, and then we're going to start looking in on Railcraft, and there's some rumours that we'll be working out uh, exactly how Spawn is laid out with regards to different buildings and, and such. And if we headed over to Spawn right now, which we're probably not going to do, um, we would see that there is a lot of... <laughs> Uh, landmarks laid out, dividing the area into different pieces. One of which is the train station, uh, which is going to be sort of my main focus, because we want to have like an interdimensional train station. Whoop. They are coming to get me, it would seem. Fortunately, I have a sword of gouging. 
which Ben didn't in the original movie. No? Is he gone? I don't see him. He can't have gotten in here. So, back door maybe? Hello! Hello doggy. How are you? Yeah, I think he was here. <laughs> I'm a little bit sniveling. Uh, one of my housemates is kind of coming out of an illness, which I may have a, I may have contracted from him. Uh, socks on the seven, so I can't sleep. Hmm. Well, that's okay. I guess I'll just call it a point here. Uh, so yeah, we're going to try and have an interdimensional railway we're using Mistcraft, and I think fairly soon I will have all of the pieces I need to make uh, the Mistcraft world for Dawn of the Dead. But we are going to finish off our overworld projects before we start on that very much. Uh, we may have our like, main resource gathering structures and such there. You. And they're at the doors again, it would seem. Hi there. Bye there. And this should I actually be able to grab it. Yep. <laughs> there we go. Because this can grab things through walls, unlike the... Uh, Black hole band could, and you may have noticed that the bookcases in here are gone. Yeah, that's partially from our update to Bibliocraft, and partially because things exploded. Which was a bit of a pain, but oh well. We shall persevere. Never give up, never surrender, all that. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna use- I'm, I figured out how to fuel and send off locomotives, and how to have them pass through Mistcraft portals, uh, which we can do because we have the crystals to make them, and we can then send them to different areas and such, and it'll be pretty damn awesome to just to observe, if not to be actually on board. Uh, but that's for another time, so uh, no stampy around again, because we're over here at the build, so uh, catch you next time, guys.